Vibrenza was our flagship, yes. Mm -hmm. And it is different because unlike the common mm, proteolytic or common systemic, you guys cover the whole gamut from here to here. Um, Ab absolutely. Um, there's, in the last 15, 18 years, I mean, I mean, there's some formulas that have been out, out there for 45 plus years at this point. Um, then there was a, a lot of progress made about uh, 15, 20 years ago, um, coming up with different, finding new enzymes that were capable of doing more things in with less volume and delivery systems started changing a bit and, and things like that. And that was kind of the thing. And then all, all a lot of the companies that would come out with a new product, it was basically a regurgitation of the of the last product, um, the last big thing. Don't, don't and, do again, right? Right. And and in and in speaking with a lot of different practitioners over the years, consumers too, for that matter, um, we learned something very quickly. There were a lot of people that were kind of frustrated with uh, a lot of like especially in systemic enzymes, which was what Fibrenza is, in systemic enzymes, there were a lot of things that were frustrating. You're looking at, I mean, some products got to take handfuls at a time, uh, delivery systems that were so unreliable that some people were passing certain tablets or, or capsules, um, incredibly high doses. You had to take them three times a day. It had to be away from food. Um, some people would see amazing benefits, but some people wouldn't. So there was a lack of reliability in that case. Uh, price points that were starting on the retail end that were starting to exceed $150 plus for a 30 day supply. Um, there were a lot of things that frustrated a lot of people. And um, so taking it upon ourselves to try and improve upon that was really the, the our primary task with Fibrenza in making it our flagship product. Okay, so if you take it a little more technical, I noticed that there are some plant-based and there are some animal-based enzymes there. Yes, I noticed and that's some... very deliberate. Indeed. Uh, so we'll talk, talk about the pH issues and all of that. And that pH is actually a great point because that is a big factor. Um, as I touched on a moment ago, the, a lack of reliability and seeing a benefit uh, is, was a big frustration, both from practitioners as well as consumers. They're spending, like I said earlier, uh, up to $150 or more in some cases. They want to see results. And some of them did see results and some of them didn't. And there's a lot of factors for that. Um, as you mentioned, we have animal-based enzymes and plant-based enzymes in our product. And, and again, that is very, very intentional. Uh, the reason being is we are all different. I, I mean, there are two there are two different spectrums out there prior to Fibrenza. There were two spectrums. There were your plant-based enzyme products and your animal-based enzyme products, where this side um, will use ingredients like trypsin, chymotrypsin, and pancreatin as their primary active enzymes in their formula. And then in this side, you have people that are putting out plant-based products, and, and those would oftentimes go up to and include serapeptase, which is an awesome enzyme, um, as their primary active ingredient. And in both instances, some people respond really, really well, some people don't. And why, why was that? And it's because, as I mentioned, we are all different. We have, all have different metabolisms, we have different pH ranges, we have different blood types, all of those things are going to have a huge impact on how well a person is going to assimilate and utilize an animal-derived enzyme over a plant one and vice versa. And that's really where Fibrenza shines. Fibrenza is the only systemic enzyme that's taken the most potent enzymes from both sources and combined them. And like you will not find a, another systemic enzyme out there, not one, that has trypsin, chymotrypsin, and pancreatin, as well as serapeptase, natokinase. Ours is the only formula that has superoxide dismutase in it. Ours is also the only formula that has Ciaprose in it, and Ciaprose is a tremendous enzyme. Um, very, very potent. In fact, there's a lot of people that would compare serapeptase to Ciaprose. But if you do the research, or if you look into the research that's been done on the two, because they have been compared side by side, so, uh, Ciaprose edges out serapeptase every time, but we have both. 
because we are a fan of both. Serapeptase is a great enzyme, but Ciaprose kind of tops it. And having those most potent enzymes from both sources means there's something for every metabolism, every blood type, every pH range to respond to. And it takes that hit or miss out of the equation as far as seeing a benefit, makes it far more reliable to the customer. And also gives us the ability to be the only guaranteed systemic enzyme on the market. Um, and that's a real big deal. Um, you have, uh, like I said, people making these large investments in, in, in these products. And, and don't get me wrong, lots of companies guarantee freshness and lots of them guarantee potency. And that's, that's really nice. We do too. But we do guarantee benefit. If a person tries our product and they don't see the benefits we're talking about, we do not want them paying for it, period. So let's say that. Why would a person want to pick fibrins, or fibrins, how you pronounce it? Um, Numerous reasons. Uh, very low dosing, way higher compliance, higher reliability of seeing success with the product. Um, no, I mean, I mean specifically, what's wrong with me so that I am the candidate that you say, oh, yeah, oh. fibrins are for you? Okay, so our biggest success stories are going to be with uh, chronic pain, inflammation, arthritis, scar tissue, um, fibromyalgia certainly helped put us on the map. Um, we have a lot of women that use it for uterine fibroids, fibrocystic breasts, uh, and there's a whole host of different cardiovascular benefits that come with it. Um, blood cleansing, artery cleansing, vascular inflammation, blood pressure modulation. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to use in, I mean, for real viable reasons, use systemic enzymes. So actually, it's interesting. When I think about it, you just named all of the chronic inflammatory problems that most people don't associate with lifestyle, but are usually caused by lifestyle. Usually. It typically is, oh my gosh, I have uh, inflammatory problems, and it could be in the circulatory system, in the muscular skeletal mm -hmm. uh, digestive, wherever these problems may be, and they all will respond to the enzyme treatment, right? Absolutely. Every single one of those instances. Every single one of them. And, and, and it's really easy to do, too, because like systemic enzymes for a lot of years, they got a bad rap where you had to take handfuls of them at a time, three times a day. Um, I mean, with, with real-world dosing with Fibrenza, it's two capsules, two times a day, empty stomach. I mean, that will cover most of your more mild to moderate conditions, certainly. Um, and with real severe, more chronic cases, maybe go to three capsules twice a day. So less, less capsules per dose, less doses per day because of our delivery system, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's a much shorter time to wellness. You don't have to be on it for a month or two months or three months to start seeing the slightest hint of benefit. Um, most people will start, especially with your inflammatory conditions, most people will start seeing a difference in 5, 10, 15 days. Well, okay, so I had a small operation or whatever, and so I have a scar. Actually, no, I have an open wound because yeah. I, had, I either was in a car accident or I have a bullet wound or I have been cut open. Now what? Now definitely get on enzymes. Uh, certainly, certainly, if, if, if first and foremost, if for no other reason, just to get rid of that inflammation and put those tissues back into a state where they're much more apt to heal on their own. That's number one. And certainly, from a, a, a pain standpoint, get rid of, you're not going to have pain without inflammation. So you get rid of one, you're going to get rid of the other. Um, and so curbing that inflammation would certainly help make your discomfort that you're experiencing a whole lot more bearable. Um, those are the more obvious reasons. But going up to and including the healing process and scar tissue formation, yes, you're going to want to get on enzymes too. Um, the, with the way that systemic enzymes work, it comes down to proteins. And scar tissue is certainly a protein-based matter. And so like the instant a wound occurs, you're, you're immediately gonna have little strands of fibrous tissue that start to build and build and build and begin that healing and stop the bleeding or contribute towards stopping the bleeding, I should say, along with clotting factors and such. But um, that all the repair mechanisms are gonna form that scar tissue to heal that wound and, and eventually build up to form that scar that you see. 
All right. Now, you want to take those enzymes to keep that from becoming excess scar tissue, from becoming a keloid like you, like you might see on the outside, or to help prevent the formation of adhesions, which is internal scar tissue underneath the skin. You want to keep that stuff from coming, and the systemic enzymes are certainly going to help in a huge way to keeping that from happening. All right, so talk to me about a person who would like to lose weight. I know one lady who was taking this uh, fibrinolytic enzyme for uh, fibroids, and she called and said, fibroids gone, and all my stretch marks are gone too. Well, again, that would certainly stem from the scar tissue. Um, the fibroids, that is a huge success story of ours. Uh, we hear that one a lot. Uh, it's, we, a, lot of, a lot of emotional stories that come with that one, and it, it's pretty awesome. Um, but yes, uh, stretch marks certainly would qualify. Um, anywhere where there's excess protein, that's the best way to put it. Anywhere where there's excess protein that, and, and protein that just simply doesn't belong. Scar tissue qualifies for that. Certainly fibroids qualify for that. I mean, if I, the makeup of a fibroid, yes, the cause is certainly different, but the material that makes up a fibroid is not all that dissimilar from the material that makes up scar tissue. Uh, and both of them are protein based, um, and and it, like I said, when it, when I when I say it comes down to proteins, like when you look at a digestive enzyme formula, you'll notice there's enzymes for fats and starches and carbs and sugars and all that stuff. When you look at a systemic enzyme, you'll find the vast majority of those enzymes are proteolytic or protein eating in nature, and the reason for that and the reason why they do what they do once they get into our blood is not because of their capabilities by themselves, because enzymes really don't know anything. It's your body that gives the enzymes their brains and sends them where they need to go. And that is all done through the realization of what kind of protein is it. Every protein-based cell in the human body is tagged by the body as either an endogenous protein, meaning it's supposed to be there, or an exogenous protein, meaning it's not supposed to be there. And your body will only disperse the enzymes to go after and break down those proteins that have been specifically tagged as exogenous, the ones that don't belong. And it will disperse those enzymes to go after and break down whatever shouldn't be there. Mentioning that wound and the healing and the scar tissue formation and all that stuff that I touched on earlier, you can take all the enzymes in the world and it'll eat up all the excess scar tissue on the outside. It will eat up all those adhesions on the inside but it will never eat up so much that it reopens that wound. And that's because your body has specifically said, these cells are necessary to keep these, this wound healed. So right. it's your body that makes the enzymes smart. Right, so and what it means really is that the scar is seen as not me, whereas the normal tissue is seen as me. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. So uh, I've heard people telling me, oh, but I don't want to take enzyme every day because I don't want my body to get lazy and stop making them. I think it's dunderheaded, but you tell me from what you know. That is, yeah, your, your body's not going to stop producing enzymes. Um, it's not, that's not how they work. And it, enzymes go back to our birth. When, when we are born, we are born with this huge supply of enzymes already inherent within us. And through our childhood, our body is not shy about producing these enzymes and taking these enzymes that we get from food and diet and things like that and using them by the truckload. And it does use them by the truckload. And that's why when we're five and 10 and 15 years old, we'd be running around and we'd trip and fall and hurt ourselves and get right back up and keep doing whatever it was that hurt us in the first place. But you might notice when we're 40 or 50 or 60 years old, it just isn't quite that same way. And the whole difference is enzymes. And that's because of a lot of changes that take place through our life. Um, some real big changes certainly happen in our late 20s, or like 28, 29, 30 years old. A lot of big changes take place. Our aging process kicks into high gear at that point. But also, too, our body takes inventory. And our body says, hey, if we keep using these enzymes at the rate that we did through our youth, we're not going to have any by the time we get to 40 or 50 or 60. So instead of using them by the truckload, it starts to use them by the spoonful. And that's why when we get older, pain is more debilitating, recovery times take longer, scars are more visible. It's all because of enzymes. So supplementing with a systemic enzyme puts that huge supply back in play again. 
And our bodies quickly adapt to that. And they say, hey, wow, now I look at all these enzymes that we've got right now, but there's more where that came from. And so our body starts to feel more free to use them again in a similar manner to the way it did when we were younger. And that's why they work so well for pain and inflammation and arthritis and scar tissue and so on. And as far as production goes, yes, as, our, as, our, as we age, our production does diminish, but it will not go away because we still have 8,300, and I think that's the last count, 8,300 different chemical reactions within the body that rely solely on enzymes to help make happen. Enzymes are catalysts, and none of those chemical reactions will take place without them. So we are still going to be producing enzymes. Okay. I guess that's probably why most professional athletes end their career careers in their late 20s or early 30s, because they just simply run out of the ability to keep to going, recover. to recover. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So tell me this, Fibrenza, somebody should be on it, or a guy like me should be on it all the time, really, because that, yeah. is, that is the prescription for maintaining the function that I would like to have recovery, prevention of uh, decline, scar tissue, that's hardening of things. Immune system modulator, blood pressure modulator, uh, car blood cleanser, artery cleanser, uh, re keeping vascular inflammation in check. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that happen, especially like in your microcirculatory areas of your body, those, those fine hair-like capillaries all throughout the body, in your eyes, um, Cold hands and feet, numbness and tingling in your extremities. That's a real thing that hundreds of thousands, millions of people go through. Um, and that comes down to circulation, period. Um, so helping maintain those things. Um, but yes, it isn't just for a chronic condition. You don't need to, oh, I have this illness, so now I need systemic enzymes. I have no chronic conditions at all. I mean, I'm not a, a monument to all that's healthy and righteous in the world, but knock on wood, I don't have any chronic conditions. I still take Fibrenza every single day. I take it as a, at a very low dose. Honestly, I have an abundance of access to it, so whatever lands in my hand, one or maybe two capsules twice a day. But I take a low dose, and I do that daily, and, and twice daily. But if uh, something happens, like I do a lot of mountain biking, and unfortunately, I'm not that good at it. So I'm prone to taking the occasional spill. But when I do, I will, instead of taking that small dose, I will up my dose to three or maybe even four capsules twice a day. Just for a few days, take that edge off and get me right again. Very rarely does anything settle in on me. Even more simple things like, um, like I wake up wrong, I, I slept wrong, I have a kink in my neck or a sore back. I will up my dose and I'm right as rain a day, two days, three days later at the most. Um, sore throat, same thing. Runny nose, same thing. I up my dose. Um, but maintaining with that low dose keeps the levels in your body to a le at a higher level so that when you do put that higher dose in, your body's ready to send those exactly where they need to go. When somebody starts on enzymes for the very first time, there's what's called an activation period. Um, different products have different length times of activation periods that has to do with the potency, um, the blend itself, and uh, the, del the delivery systems as well. And so some products might be, you know, a month or two months of an activation period before you can expect to start seeing that benefit. Um, with Fibrenza, it's more like five or ten especially with your inflammatory conditions, like five or 10 days, 15 days, maybe at the most. Would it be advisable to take a higher dose at first? Um, that certainly wouldn't hurt. Uh, and it's in, depending on what you're taking it for, they could actually potential, have the potential of speeding things up a bit. So yes, that, that could apply. Um, but there's two sides to that too, because there are some people that have certain sensitivities and things like that, where, it may not be the right call for them to, you know, start taking four capsules twice a day out of the gate. Um, for those people, it may be more appropriate to start out more gradually or in a more gradual manner and, and very like every, you know, start out one capsule twice a day, empty stomach for three to five days, and then up to two capsules twice a day for three to five days and so on. That might be more appropriate for some than others. 